Welcome to the last session of today. We're listening to Thomas, better known as Zuku, for the Debian way to install OpenStack. Over to you, Thomas. Hello. So I'm here today to show you that one last year of development on something that we call commonly OCI as OpenStack Cluster Installer. So uh, I like to have an energetic uh, presentation. You feel free to stop me whenever you want, when you have a question, when there's something you don't get. So I'm, I'm 43, I'm a DD since 2010. I've been maintaining OpenStack since 2011. Uh, I've been working on hosting industry since uh, the beginning of my career. And I'm now working for Open. Uh, Infomaniac, which is a platinum sponsor uh, for DebConf, which, by the way, I did not ask for, so we use Debian everywhere on all of our servers, and my boss just did it by himself. So I, I have as a mission to build a, a public cloud for Inf Infomaniac, which hopefully will be out uh, soon. So back in Taiwan, I explained to everyone my feelings about the public cloud. Um, we, uh, so, to me, public cloud is a very important thing for everyone that needs to put some workload on public IPs. And we shall not fight it. We should embrace it and make. Uh, let, we sh must let people understand that it's very important that they use free software for the cloud, including in the underlying infrastructure. And it's my strong feeling that OpenStack is best fit for the job, and that I hope that Debian is the best place to run OpenStack. So to make it easier for people to use OpenStack on, on Debian, uh, OK, so um, just before that, uh, IBM apparently, bought Red Hat because they do believe in the technology for public cloud and they intend to fight uh, on, on the market for public cloud together with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Engine. So um, my, my, current, my goal, which uh, is to make OpenStack easier to use, not only for me, but for everyone that is a Debian user, so the first step was to write debconf helpers so that you can install OpenStack manually on your server. Uh, over the sprint of last year, I contributed to the Puppet OpenStack project upstream so that it would also work for Debian. And the final step was to glue it all, the, the Debian packages and Puppet, and to write a full cluster installer. So it started because I tried the internal software of my company and it didn't really work out for me. It was um, kind of a bit annoying with, with uh, uh, VLAN setup and such a thing. So I tried three times, three times I went to data center and I couldn't make it work. Uh, and then I got tired of it and in two days I was able to write a very small uh, piece of what now I call OCI, that does the bare metal setup. So in fact, installing OpenStack on a hard drive isn't very hard. Um, that, that's, that's not the hard part of the things. Uh, bef before I wrote things uh, by myself, we investigated other bare metal uh, software such as Mass, Forman, Cobbler, or Ironic, and finally I decided that none were fitted for the job. Uh, so, we still use Foreman, but for non-OpenStack things. So, OCI is, contains, uh, reuse some technologies such as a Lime stack, Puppet, TFTP server, and a DHCP server. So, the process is that uh, you boot up your physical machines over PXE. Uh, and DHCP, and uh, it fetches a SquashFS image over HTTP, so therefore OCI also contains, the, the OCI master node also contains an Apache server. And the image um, 
calls OCI uh, and, and tell it that it's there and, and does the hardware discovery. So instead of having many, many slides, I will just show you how it works. So what you see here is a server which has 256 gig of RAM and a one terabyte drive. I use it for my development, though it's exactly, it works exactly the same as if you were running with real hardware. So if I do OCI CLI machine list, you see, uh, okay, I, I can try. I can try, but then you won't see all the lines. So what, what you see on, on the left here are the serial numbers of the machines. Um, and to make it more fun, I'm going to completely destroy this, that, that cluster. Okay. So that completely destroys all the VMs that are running on the cluster. As you can see, nothing is running there. Um, by the way, uh, this machine has some uh, network setup. I, let me show you. So, come in front. <laughs> you are at the very end of the room. <laughs> I can make it a little bit bigger. So, uh, as you can see, there are four bridges, each of them with, with some IPs. If I do BR, CTL show. So you can see that all of these bridges are connected to many uh, virtual interfaces. So these are connected to the interfaces of the VMs that I'm going to start right now. So What you see here is that it's, co it's copying a QCO image of uh, uh, a node that has OCI and, when it, and then some empty hard drives. So we start from scratch with no servers installed. Now that he has started the, the PXE machine, it, the, the script is trying to SSH it and to configure it. So it installs Apache, blah, 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 a bit creating the database, run the password, do a DB sync, okay. And now, now it's calling the root CA generator, so it has created a PKI for OpenStack. And now it's starting the VMs, and that's, that's where becomes interesting. So one first VM is starting. It's going eventually to get the HTTP. And there you go. It shouldn't stop there normally. That one has failed, it seems. Let's see another one. Oh, that one is still getting the HTTP. What you get later on is that 
CI CLI is a bunch of commands for the machines so you can show them, add them, remove them, destroy them, reboot them on, on I, IPMI. So I can show you the script I use on my on my POC. Uh, see I So this is what, what I, I start after the VMs are started. So it sets up the IPMI port, uh, username and password, then creates a networks, add them to, to the cluster, which is called D, and then add the machines with their role to, uh, to the cluster. Uh, apparently I'm getting out of luck today and they don't want to boot. I don't really understand why. It's the demo effect. <laughs> Never mind. So I'll, sh I'll show you a cluster which is already set up. So here, that that's a real, real cluster. So I, I understand it's maybe a bit small. But here you see all the machines which have their names automatically populated. Okay, I can show you uh, one machine on, on it. So as you can see, you can see it's uh, IPs in the cluster. The, that, that's all of that is uh, the, the detected automatically when when the live image starts. Okay, so let, let's go back to the presentation. So, so why am I using uh, a live image for doing the hardware discovery? Uh, in a lot of projects, I saw, I saw others using a huge init RD file the problem is that this doesn't scale and uh, one should avoid uh, as much as possible using PXE, which is UDP. Uh, this probably, uh, uh, this may not work when you have, uh, when you are over uh, uh, large distance, like uh, Mark told me about, Matt told me about uh, a, few, a few days ago. It, this also doesn't scale if you use an intardi over PXE that is huge you will get uh, get in trouble when, when there is too many nodes booting at the same time. Um, the, the live image is also easy to customize. You adding a package is just one, one more line. Yes? Thank you. I really want, want things to be interactive. Hi, Tom. Um, you say that uh, it's a problem loading init RTs that are large over uh, UDP. That's true. However, you can use LPixie and then uh, LPixie Linux. It's in the Swiss Linux package, sure. and then it fetches kernel and init RT over HTTP. Right, right, and uh, yes. The the other advantage is that you don't get into uh, once you booted the live image, you we really get a, f a full system where we can upget something, um, uh, do some diagnostic. So uh, typically, I just boot up hardware, um, SSH into it, set up IPMI. For example, if it's Dell, then I use the iDRAC uh, shell tool. If it has a, a RAID card, I use Megacli because we do have some of these nasty and all free stuff in our company. So it's, it's very nice to be able to SSH to the system before it gets installed. Uh, so the hardware discovery, I saw many, many implementation, uh, lots of them uh, being uh, over-engineered. I tried to make it super easy, super simple to understand. It's only 63 lines of script last time I have checked. Uh, if you compare that to something like uh, 
ironic. Uh, it's like uh, 15,000 lines of, of Python scripts that they have, and I, I've done it in 63. So it uh, doesn't mean that mine is, is uh, so much better, but it's, it's enough for the job. Uh, I, so I, I reused uh, lots of uh, tools like uh, LS hardware and such uh, to do that. And it just produces a JSON that I just curl to, uh, to OCI itself. And that's enough. So I get a full report of the memory configuration, serial, uh, system serial, hard drive size, NIC speed, BIOS, IPME versions. So I also have the LADVD output, LADVD-C, the client, so that I can know which, uh, on which switch and which port switch it, it's connected. Okay, so uh, OCI also contains in the live image uh, an installer, so that installer um, is made of a small shell script again, which I, I've been uh, using for producing the OpenStack official image for Debian since Jesse. Uh, so it uses very common tools like Parted, Grub, APCalc. So there's nothing like, uh, it's not rocket science, it's quite uh, easy to install a bare metal system and it just does the job. Um, A bit more than just installing the Debian on your bare metal systems. It's going also to prepare things for the next stage, which is open installing OpenStack. So it has, uh, so OpenStack Debian image uh, has a hook script, which is used by OCI to pre-set up uh, the certificates for Puppet. So uh, as you may know, um, the Puppet Master is authenticated on the client and the client to the Puppet Master and everything is, is over SSL. But you need to prepare the certificates to do that and OCI does it. Uh, there's also an internal PKI for OpenStack itself because uh, even though you may want some real certificates to provide the API to your OpenStack users, um, you also need an internal uh, uh, root CA to exchange data between your nodes, which does not necessarily use uh, uh, real certificates. For example, uh, when you reach the OpenStack API through, uh, you reach uh, HA proxy, which re-encrypts everything to the, every node so that uh, checking that root certificate. While doing the installation, there's all sorts of tiny tweaks that are made as, as well, like uh, ser serial console, if you use that, uh, through APMI, these type of things. So the goal is that you just press one button and then it installs fully your, your bare metal machines, including serial, uh, BIOS options, uh, monitoring, all of it. On top of that, so I, th I first thought that I would just uh, do uh, an OpenStack installer and I quickly realized that uh, networking also needs some management uh, through, uh, through uh, DB. And then there's a kind of network manager that, that is included in, in OCI. So you may define your management network, the, ma the network that is going to use for VXLAN between your VMs. Uh, and uh, during the installation, uh, the OpenStack Debian images is now capable also of setting up bonding, VLAN, and bridges, sometimes multiple times per node. For example, uh, a Ceph OSD will have the cluster network and the client network that we, that potentially, depending on how you choose to configure things, each of them will use uh, LACP and uh, uh, VLAN. And uh, so 
once we've, we've set up all of these on the network nodes, we need this information to be able to, for the next stage to install OpenStack and, and all the components. So, and there we are. So after rebooting the machine, once it's set up, um, we have one big puppet manifest per type of role that is included in OCI. Uh, it reuses all the OpenStack, uh, the puppet OpenStack modules that you've seen upstream, plus a bit more like a crony, HA proxy, Corosync, uh, the official Apache, Galera, RabbitMQ. So most of the Puppet module that I've chosen, I did that carefully. Most of the time, using the Puppet Labs module to make sure that they were uh, correctly maintained. And absolutely 100% of all of that, I packaged it and pushed it to Debian because I want to be able to be uh, frozen into one version and and keep that uh, up to. Uh, keep that in, uh, maintained in Debian for uh, a, a cycle of uh, the stable release. So uh, is there here some people who don't know what uh, ENC is? Can you raise your hand? Okay, so um, in puppets there is the external node classifier. So. Normally, Puppet uh, sends uh, some information to the slave nodes to tell them how to configure them themselves. And uh, you have the option to write your own external node classifier, which means that y you take the charge of telling which Puppet class will be called and with what parameters. So. OCI has that, and this is an example that I took for a compute node. So as you can see, all the, the passwords are sent to the nodes, which isn't a problem by itself, because as I said earlier, it's, it's sent over HTTPS and nodes are authenticated. So uh, these generated passwords are stored in uh, OCI's DB. So you'd better protect that machine and make sure that nobody steals password there. Which should be fine. So uh, when when I set up a, a, a cloud, the hosts themselves don't have internet access at all. So you do, so it's it's okay to do that. So that's the other reason why I insisted in packaging everything because I want to be able to have only a Debian repository so that I can set up my cluster. No access to the Forge. No access to GitHub or whatever. This would require. Uh, less security in my network. So, uh, all, all of the cluster state is stored in, in, in the DB of OCI, including hostname, network configuration rules, and passwords. And it also allows the, uh, some configuration, so configuration of the cluster as a whole, or um, uh, individual hosts. And based on this configuration, then the main puppet manifest will take some decisions. Uh, so I try to make things the less invasive possible so that you can continue to, to configure puppet the way you're used to. For example, uh, in, at Infomaniac internally, we use uh, don't ask me why. Uh, we use SendMail. <laughs> and uh, so I've, I've just uh, added the SendMail uh, Puppet module that we use internally and, and SSH keys. And that's not a problem because OCI does not touch at all the, the standard Puppet configuration. On top of that, you can also customize what is sent by the ENC through some uh, YAML uh, drop-in files that you can put per role and per cluster and per host. Uh, so there's, there's also the possibility to add your own shell scripts as hooks. 
to add some package lists. Uh, you can also describe uh, uh, some, some, you can add some files that are going to be auto automatically added to the host you install. Uh, so, why did I do the, that? that work of packaging all the puppet modules. So, because Debian is a, Debian is a trusted source, so that you won't be able, to, you won't have to use a puppet file that is going to download from wherever on GitHub that you have no control of. Um, it, it helps me also to track patches. So, uh, there's a few patches that I had some difficulties to submit upstream. So as you know, we ha the Debian packages are a good way to, to track packages. And it's easier to freeze in time. If you, if you use uh, R10K, for example, it's going to download whatever's the latest version. That's probably not what you want. You don't want to have a server that just explodes because upstream released a change on, 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 on his puppet module. And finally, of course, that's for security because you don't want to access uh, uh, that you don't want your host or even your puppet master to access to the outside. Um, there's a bit of work that is also done on the SSH key. So when when you first provision uh, your puppet master server with OCI, uh, you it, it generates by himself an SSH key that it needs to. SSH into the host when they are in, in the live environment. You can also add some more SSH keys there so that you can SSH yourself. And what we do at Informaniac is that on top of that, once the servers are set up and live, and then we, we have some puppet scripts that ma maintain the SSH keys. As features that uh, OpenStack uh, that OCI can do, so it can install all of that, all of these OpenStack services. Um, all of them are, are set up in a high availability manner. So basically you have uh, Corosync where that maintains a, an IP address that can move on into the one of the controllers that you have set up. So most of the time you would set up at least three uh, controllers that where the OpenStack API will run. So that IP address can be just like on a slash uh, 24 network. What, what we do in Informaniac is that we advertise that IP address through BGP. So OCI doesn't do that for you, but we s store the configuration of uh, uh, Quagga inside uh, the Puppet node, and so at provisioning time, it Quagga is already uh, configured as it should. And then, um, so Corosync keeps one of the nodes with that IP address on the lo local loopback, and then is advertised uh, through BGP, and therefore we have uh, the IP API AP, uh, IP that moves from one node to another depending if they are all available or not. Um, so, I try to write things as modular as possible so that it's possible to design a cluster the way you want and not the way uh, somebody imposed it on you. So. You can use Ceph, but you don't have to. You can use Swift, but you don't have to. And uh, nearly everything is like that. So if you have Ceph, then you can decide to use it for um, your virtual machine in, so that they would be stored on Ceph instead of the Varlib Nova instances, which enables you to live migrate them without having to live migrate the block storage. Um, if you have some self OSD nodes, then Cinder volume will be installed on each compute node. So uh, why on each compute node? Because this way, uh, the number of Cinder volume will grow at the same time as your cloud, uh, which is convenient. 
but it could it could have been somewhere else. To, so I just found it was sensitive to do this way. Um, if you have Ceph or Swift, then Glens will be using one of these gateways, one of these backends. If you have some volume nodes, then Swift API, Cinder API will be set up on your controllers. You also have the choice to use uh, separate, separated uh, machines for your Galera cluster. Otherwise, they will be put on the controllers. Uh, another thing, so you can decide to have separated self monitor nodes that will also run the manager. Otherwise, they will be set up on your controllers. And finally, if you have Ceph, then this means that OCI will set up for you uh, the full tele telemetry <coughs> with salometer, uh, um, uh, uh, Penko alarming, and uh, Cloud Kitty, so that you can have rating on the usage of your cloud. Uh, so. As much as I could, I tried to write things easy and uh, to hack and debug. So uh, it's probably easier to do that when there is not 80 engineers working on Triple O like at Red Hat. Um, and I think that's about it for pr the presentation. So I'd like to first thank um, my employer Infomaniac for give me, giving me the opportunity to write all of, all of that in free software and push everything to Debian. Uh, I'd like to thank all the OpenStack contributors and especially the people from Puppet OpenStack that helped me to make it work for Debian. And uh, thanks for you for attending this talk. Thank you. So time for questions. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know if I have yeah, so that's 15 minutes. So while, while I'm taking questions, I will try to make that, uh, that thing work. How do you handle different OpenStack releases? They are released in, in a six-month schedule. And you said that you have the packages in Debian. Can you install different versions? How does that work? Uh, so I'm packaging all of them. Uh, together with uh, Andres, can you raise your hand? Yes, you can. <laughs> so together with a few contributors, it means that uh, they are available on uh, Debian release name dash OpenStack release name dot Debian dot net. For example, stretch dash Rocky dot Debian dot net or uh, Buster dash Stein dot Debian dot net. So this is where to consume them. Unfortunately, I have no space to store them inside the, the, the Debian archive namespace because, as you said, it's every six months while we have cycles of uh, two years and a half around. So that's the way you would do. You would consume the back ports. So let's say you start from now, then you can set up Buster, which has Rocky in it, and then you can upgrade to Stein through the back ports and then you will, in two months from then, from now, you will be able to upgrade to train. Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't see uh, where, where it was. So, anyone has another question? So what I don't understand is that I showed the exact same thing to Hugo yesterday and it worked perfectly, right? <laughs> Any other question? We checked IRC this time and no questions there yet. <laughs> So I, I, I'll try to make it work. What's funny have is you, that it, have, you, have you investigated a uh, curtain or a cloud in it to use something that is already being developed and 
if you did, uh, why that didn't fit your purpose? Cloud in it? Yeah, and curtain. So I do maintain cloud in it for right. the OpenStack images. Okay. In Debian, and how would that fit in? So, this? so you're using. We're using it for, for the, the images. For the Debian of okay. the images, yes. Right. Okay. Oh, it's working. Wonderful. So you see it's, it's booting a, a live image. Oh, it's at the bottom of the screen. The screen is too small. Oh, you saw it. Here, you saw the SquatchFS image downloaded over HTTP. So, yeah, as you saw, it's very fast. Now it's continuing to boot. So, I, internally, yeah, I use uh, IPMI SIM from uh, OpenIPMI to fake IPMI usage. Okay? So, now that the first machine is booted, it appears here. Yoo-hoo! Working. <laughs> I have no idea why it didn't work the first time. <laughs> so now you see them booting one by one. So I, there's a delay of like a few seconds between the boots of every VMs. So you see their DHCP address here, amount of memory, they are currently running Debian Live, and that's the serial number I will use to interact with every machine. So, as I said earlier, so that, that, that's the script I normally just run at once. Okay, so let's run it. So it's creating the cluster, adding network and machines to them. Okay. So now we see I clean machine list, and now you s you see them all. They, so the host names have been calculated. So that's cluster name, role, and number, and then whatever domain name that you want. So. I can do OCI CLI machine show and uh, I'll take uh, this machine so that's C4. Okay. I If I want, I can do a machine set. Uh, I'll take that compute one, which is D2. Okay. And I. So there's, there's bash completion on all of that. Okay. So. Use self if available. No, that one I don't want you to use self. I want it to use the local hard drive. Okay, that that's just an example. Then you can also set up uh, software RAID. So uh, we did that because uh, we had a few machines where we couldn't do. We didn't have RAID for the system. Uh, now, if I want to install a machine, I just do. OS install. Right. On, let's say we'll take. We're going to to set up the self cluster. Okay, so I install C4. Normally, it's it's huge serial numbers of machines. Okay, it's not not C4 like that. C5. C6. So I redo machine list. Now you can see over here that they are installing, and of course, because they are installing the OS, Puppet is still not running yet on it. So, because I have, uh, I, I can do machine install log of C4, for example, and that's just a boring D bootstrap. I can as well SSH to it. Oh, 
Oh, why? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly. And read the log. So it's, go it's going to eventually take some time to do that. So you can ask for more questions if you want. Anyone? Uh, yeah, uh, so I, I just one thing. So I, here I've showed you OpenStack. I also created a role that is called Deb Mirror. So you can just say, oh, I want, I want a Debian Mirror. And put, here it pops. Do you, do you ever have any uh, like, uh, problems where the script would be able to like, repair a cluster node? Like let's say you had a you know, C4 for um, one of your uh, Ceph nodes went away. The, the node C4 went away. Do you have accommodations for that, or is that something you're interested in? So what OCI does is, is helping you to do the setup. Okay, it provides you with a set of puppet scripts which are standard, as in like from upstream. It doesn't provide you with monitoring and maintenance. That's not because you have a tool to do to ease your installation that you can be brainless. You just must know how it works and how to fix things if they occur. Does the ENC hold that data though? Could you come back and say reinstall C4? Is that something, I mean, you're, re you're reinstalling C4 now. Could you come back a year or later and, and run the same command? And get no, the so same uh, what, what didn't work previously on when I first demoed it was a, it, the PXE setup so somehow didn't work. It wasn't something else. Thank you. So it, it's nearly finished, okay. So now it's adding Busterstein, which is the, repo the, the backport repository. Uh, the, it's possible to install whatever flavor you want. So like, if you want stretch with Rocky, uh, Buster without any backport repositories, just, just plain Buster, that works as well or Buster plus uh, Stein, that works with the Stein backports, that works too. So now if I redo, okay, so now we can see that C4 and, uh, and C6 are, are currently uh, uh, rebooting. I can, so two, three, four, that's going to be five. So you see that one is currently booting for the first time. So now it's uh, doing a curl thing to tell OCI that it, it has finished booting. I can set up The other nodes now. So you got to know that you got to install the Ceph monitor first, then the Ceph no OSDs, then the controllers, then everything else. So now, in fact, a Puppet has started, and you see it's already installing things like Crony, Ceph, and other things. So if I go here, I say OCI machine list, then it's telling that uh, the server is installed and that Puppet is running. And I think we're out of time. Maybe another question? If not, then that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And